The RX 7900 XT launched at a price of $899, and nobody bought it. Lately, the price has been coming down on certain models to as low as $699. With its 380-watt power budget, can this be overclocked to RTX 4080 levels of performance? And could this be the best value 4K gaming GPU on the market? Let's get into it. The RX 7900 XT was announced in November of 2022 at an AMD-hosted event. During that event, AMD did not talk about the performance of this GPU at all. Not one performance graph. It was rather odd. Many speculated that it was only there to upsell you to the XTX, since the pricing of the XT was so bad. At $899, nobody wanted this GPU. I even commented in my video after the announcement that the 7900 XT doesn't become interesting unless the price came down to $749. Beyond that, it was DOA, just buy the XTX. Also after the announcement, I talked about how there was no announcement of the 7800 XT. However, after comparing the specs with last gen, the 7900 XT is the rightful successor to the 6800 XT. And even though the launch day was a disappointment because we did not get what AMD promised at the announcement, the review showed the 7900 XT provides a 35% increase in performance over the 6800 XT, just like the XTX provided a 35% increase. This GPU should have been called the 7800 XT. So now the prices on certain models have come down even lower than 749, and I was able to pick up an open box version for 598 or the price of a 4070, and this thing will crush a 4070. Just like the 6800 XT launched at an MSRP price of $649 and was a good value for a 4K GPU, the 7900 XT at a similar price point should also be a good value for a 4K GPU. And this GPU contains the RDNA 3 architecture in Navi 31 that uses chiplets. I've spent a couple of months with the smaller Navi 33 GPU which does not use chiplets and is a monolithic design. In my testing, I characterized the performance per watt, and I also compared against RDNA 2 in gaming, and I found that RDNA 3, as an architecture, is only a few percent better than RDNA 2. If you are interested in those findings, link above and below. Some feedback I received in the comments were based on a chips and cheese analysis that said Navi 33 is an RDNA 3 light version, as it has three major differences. It has a smaller vector register file, it uses the TSMC 6 nanometer process node, not the 5 nanometer process node of Navi 31, and it does not have the decoupled front end and shader clocks. While these are differences, there's no way a gamer can quantify the impact of these differences, and I suspect the differences at 1080p may not be that significant. But it did leave me curious enough that I wanted to get my hands on Navi 31 at the right price. With the GPU in hand, I did some quick testing to understand power scaling like I have done several times before. And this particular model, the PowerColor Hellhound, has a TBP of 330 watts. Not the 315 watts of the reference GPU and not the 300 watts that AMD originally announced. And it also allows a 15% power limit increase that takes this up to 380 watts. This is the Wildlife Extreme Performance versus Power, and the first thing you'll notice is that the performance really drops off below 250 watts. From 330 watts down to 250 watts, that is a drop of 25% in power, while the performance drops 9%. Going the other way and increasing the power 15% from 330 watts up to 380 watts, the performance only increased 3%. So the performance is starting to flatten out with increased power. To compare the characteristics of Navi 31 and 33, here is the 7600 data put onto the same chart. As you can see, even though Navi 31 is based on chiplets and Navi 33 is monolithic, they have a similar characteristic, just at a much different scale. One thing I did find interesting is that at Navi 33's TBP of 170 watts, the larger die does perform more than 50% better. Who would have thought that the larger Navi 31 GPU would have 50% more performance at the same power as the Navi 33 GPU? Hey AMD, here's another worthless 50% performance per watt claim you can make. However, once you go below 135 watts, the smaller die is clearly the performance per watt leader. 
And just for fun, since I have the data from my 3090, which I covered in an earlier video, I plotted them together. Here you can see the 7900 XT clearly provides better performance at a lower power. And that is to be expected. The 7900 XT is based upon TSMC's 5 nanometer node versus Samsung's older and less efficient 8 nanometer node used in the 3090. With the RTX 40 series generation, Nvidia has clearly segmented their GPUs by limiting the VRAM, the memory bus, and bandwidth. For example, the RTX 4060 family of GPUs for under $500 have a 128-bit memory bus with a bandwidth of 270 gigabytes per second, suitable for 1080p gaming. The RTX 4070 family, which are $600 and above GPUs, have a 192-bit memory bus with a bandwidth of 500 gigabytes per second, targeting 1440p gaming. That's about the same bandwidth as a 1080 Ti. For 4K gaming, you want a GPU that is much better than that. For example, a 2080 Ti was just over 600 gigabytes per second, the 3080 was over 750, and the 3090 was over 900. This generation, NVIDIA's entry-level 4K GPU is the RTX 4080, which has a memory bandwidth of just over 700 gigabytes per second. However, it costs $1,200. That is a pretty steep price for an entry-level 4K GPU. If you're looking for something significantly lower in price for 4K gaming, the 7900 XT with a memory bandwidth of 800 gigabytes per second may be the GPU for you. I don't have a $1,200 4080 to get power scaling data. However, I did find data that was provided in a review by a big hardware player. They perform power scaling in TimeSpy Extreme and after looking at the values, they looked very reasonable. However, I don't like the way they presented the mixed data. So I took the raw data and plotted them as performance versus power here. This data is the TimeSpy Extreme GPU score versus power. Now TimeSpy Extreme is a true 4K gaming benchmark. The Wildlife Extreme is a rather light benchmark, about as demanding as running TimeSpy at 1080p resolution, but it's quick and it's fast and allows for easy characterization. The characteristics of the 4080 die is similar to what we have seen with the 4070 Ti I tested previously. As you can see, they both have a relatively flat curve. At 280 watts, the 4070 Ti scores about 10,500, while the 4080 is just under 14,000. So the 4080 is 32% faster at this point. Hard to believe Nvidia ever thought they could ever get away with calling the 4070 Ti a 4080 12GB edition. They would have had to deal with a class action lawsuit if they didn't hit that unlaunch button. Adding the 7900 XT, and you see something interesting. At 330 watts, the 7900 XT scores 12,863, while the 4080 at 320 watts scores 14,247, or 10.8% faster. Looking a little deeper at the power scaling, the curve of the 7900 XT is not as flat as the NVIDIA GPUs. At 280 watts, the 7900 XT is 14% faster than the 4070 Ti, and they cross over at about 220 watts where they both score the same. By the way, if you appreciate this different look and comparison of these GPUs, like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what you think is a good price for an entry-level 4K GPU. But what about going in the other direction and overclocking the 7900 XT? If I just open up the power limit to its maximum of plus 15%, taking it up to 380 watts, the performance improves 4% and closes the gap with the 4080. Now overclocking the GPU and RAM and adding an undervolt, the performance comes up to 14,273 or equivalent to a stock 4080. That's amazing. The 7900 XT is showing with an increased power limit overclock and undervolt and the performance goes from 12.8 up to 14.2, or an 11% increase. And looking at the relative gaming performance at Tech Power Up, the 4080 is 15% faster than the 7900 XT. Even Hardware Unboxed is showing 16% at 4K. With the overclock, is it really possible to get within 5% of the performance of a 4080? Did AMD's pricing at launch leave such a negative impression that no one is even trying? The 7900 XT is the fourth most powerful GPU in the world today. 
it is behind the 4090, the 4080, and its bigger brother in the XTX. I'm ignoring the 3090 Ti since no one should have paid $2,000 for a new GPU just six months away from the next generation launching. Say what you will about this GPU, for six to $700 or almost half the price of Nvidia's 4K entry level GPU in the 4080, I find it an interesting buy. Will any of this translate into gaming performance? I showed that it didn't always for the 7600, but the 7600 is RDNA 3 Lite and a monolithic die. Now I have the large RDNA 3 die in Navi 31, complete with chiplets, the advanced TSMC 5 nanometer node, the larger vector register file, and the decoupled front end and shader clocks. Is that enough to make a difference in gaming to get it to within 5% of the 4080? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.